Ho Ho, the beautiful rainbow bird. We first saw this back when the anime first came out all those years ago because it could have had the potential to have been in the main game or red and blue, but then it got dropped. I remember being a kid watching the first episode of the anime thinking, what the hell is that? But once I figured out it was not in red and blue, I knew there'd be more games for me to hunt these monsters down. Now people seem to like the run I did with Lugia, so I'm back to do it all over again with Ho-Ho, and guess what? It was horrible. Horrendous. Now before I go any further, let me just plug this video's partnership. Be like 30 seconds. Do you live in Australia? Do you want to get your hands on G Fuel, but you don't want to pay those high costs from America, or face the potential danger going outside from drop bears? <laughs> Well, let Game of Fuel solve that problem. They're Australia's number one distributor of G Fuel across the country, and if you go to their website today and use the code HBT, you get 10% off their order, which is fantastic. I'm using myself, and I want everyone to get on it too. You can find the link in the description below. And remember, stay safe and look out for those drop bears. The setting is once again Pokemon Crystal, and I'll be trying to do this at the lowest level I can. Now unlike the Lugia video, this was done at the minimum amount of battles I figured I could do it with. If you're new and haven't seen those challenges, now for those runs there are no items in battle, nor are they even held, which adds another layer of difficulty, just to piss me off. Ho-Ho is a beast. It has good attacking stats, better than Lugia. However, the problem it has is that its fire moves were not physical back then, so I had to rely on the special attack of 110, which is nothing to scoff at, but it's 130. Typing is fire and flying, which is not very good. As is the problem with Charizard and standard Moltres, or any flying bird, you have quite a few weaknesses, including the ability to sniff a rock and you'll die. Its opposing number, Alugia, had a much better typing in that sense. And the last little thing, if you do like my challenges, please make sure you leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to support me a bit more, I've recently created a Patreon account, which you'll find in the description. We recently just smashed the 5k barrier, and the only way is up, so it's off to hit 10k. Strap yourselves in, get yourselves a beer, and here we go. I go to the lab and casually pick up my rainbow bird, and I call it the outcast. I did this because I felt in Gen 2, the legends never really got the amount of love the others do, both in the games and in VGC. I make sure my rival picks Turtledile to give me a harder time later on. Although, it does make me laugh if you saw this just casually walking in the street. A ho-ho versus a Totodile, are we definitely YouTube footage? Outcast is armed with only Sacred Fire, which hit with a critical right from the off, and I can finish it off with a second blast. Even though with a type disadvantage, I was always going to win this. I call my rival Pain, as in Pain from Naruto, as I really thought Magato was a good character. Nothing to report from the Sprout Tower, like Lugia, it's a bit of a joke. On to Falkno, where it's time for the Battle of the Birds. Pidgey is out to stop me, and dead. Pidgeotto, and dead. Ah, oh, well I learned, ooh, I learned Safeguard. This seems like a move I won't need. As with these runs, I'm skipping any Team Rocket because it's about as fun as being punched in the balls. Gym leaders and rivals only for me, please. Bugsy is the next contender, and well, how can you explain? I'm a fire flying legendary against Bugs. Oh, let's just freaking do this. Metapod, dead. Cypher, dead. Ooh, it survived. Ha <laughs> ha, got burnt, and then it's gonna die as the burn. I realised against Kakuna that it was pretty handy it got the burn, because it didn't have any more Sacred Fires left, which means I would have lost the battle. Oh yeah, Kakuna dead. This was always going to be an easy one, well maybe Erika if we get that far. I could not rest on my hands because Pain was back for round 2. He starts with Ghastly who gets mud slapped and survives. It then misses with Hypnosis and I'm able to slap it to death with another mud slap. Totodile is now Croconaw and I throw a Sacred Fire to it but it only does about a third. On the second attempt, I managed to burn it to help the damage come along. Croconaw's water gun does absolutely fuck all, which meant I can finish it off with another Sacred Fire. Finally, it was the mighty Zubat who went down in one fire as well. It may have all been super easy so far, but that was always going to be the case. I'm blessed with the super bird against weaklings, but now it is one we've all been waiting for. The one, the only, fucking cow. This was going to be horrendous because instead of getting this video, just sniffing a rock is enough to kill the fire flying types. And guess what rollout is? Yeah, it's a fucking rock move. Here we go, bring on the whining moose, I'll take you on. Clefairy gets smacked with Sacred Fire but survives and does get a burn. I try a mud slap and that isn't enough. It uses an ice beam but misses and the burn does its job. It's now time for the walking beef burger. I'm slower than the cow which is a great start and rollout does so much damage. Sacred Fire does about under half but it does get the burn, but it doesn't really matter because the second rollout finishes me off. 
This is the solving problem. Two rollouts equal lose. There is no way around this. And I'm level 16 and that's it. So it becomes a case of banging my head against the wall until it works. After many attempts, the cow misses the first rollout and my sacred fire is able to get a burn. This means the second attempt at rollout is a lot less. My sacred fire nearly does the job and I get hit with a second rollout, but it doesn't kill me. That's because of the burn. And then thankfully that almighty burn is able to cook it into my bun. This battle only worries me for later on against the Aerodactyl. Well, I say this, I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. I was just relieved to get this out of the way. I'm probably going to have to do this on Heart Gold because it'll just look cool and better graphics. Well, that's only if you guys want it. The Kimono Girls are a piece of piss, but they're also probably the reason it'll be so hard if I do Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Pain is back on the agenda again. He starts with the Haunter, who survives a Sacred Fire, and hits me with Curse, which is not good at all. Croconaut is now a huge concern. Sacred Fire doesn't do enough damage, but the Water Gun, along with the Curse damage, is able to rack up, and eventually I do fall. Fuck me, I've just lost to this knob cheese. I fought against the Haunter who uses Curse once more. If the Haunter uses Curse, it's over. This takes multiple attempts until it decides to use Spite instead and I can slap it to death. When it came to Croconaut, I just used Mud Slap to lower its accuracy until he's struggling to hit me and I can Rock Smash to wipe it out. Magnemite floats in and I use Safeguard because I'm low on Sacred Fires. I'm then able to use Mud Slap to kill it. I needed that Sacred Fire for the Zubat who went down in one. Remember, remember, always heal when you can. I visit Morty for a spooky occasion and I was concerned due to the speed issues and sleep bollocks. I fought the Ghastly and I'm faster and one Sacred Fire is enough. The first Haunter comes out and it falls to a Sacred Fire also. The main problem comes out, the fucking Gengar. It is faster and misses Hypnosis which allows me to hit it with a Sacred Fire and get the burn. But then the Wanker puts me to sleep and I'm fucked. Why? Fucking Dream Eater, what a wank move, and of course I don't wake up, and of course I'm knocked out. Second time, I use Safeguard before the fight against Haunter to prevent Haunty's wank plan. Once I get to Gengar, it can do bugger all to me and dies in the fire. The final Haunter is sent to the flames with little concern to me. I head my usual route and do the usual bollocks to get to Chuck. I fight Primate and use a gust to finish it off in one. <laughs> a gust? Polygraph is next and Gus does nearly 50% but then a wanker uses Hypnosis, not again. This time he uses Mind Reader so he can use Dynamic Punch. Great, now I'm fucking confused. He manages to get a work up before I do wake up. A second Gus nearly finishes it off but it's not enough. Our battle concludes when he uses Dynamic Punch again which I'm able to live through and another gust is all it takes. I always wish this battle was better as it just seems a wasted opportunity. Now it's time for Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> well, Team Rocket can just fuck off because it's boring. Price could have been an arse depending on speed. Well, I wasn't really thinking about this at the time. I thought this was going to be very easy and I would just breeze through this old geezer. Seal is nearly dead from his strength and he responds with an icy wind. Next turn, I'm still faster than I am to take it out. The Dugong the shit thing is next and Strength is over 50% and an Aura Beam does absolutely fuck all to me. Strength does the damage. The final Pokemon is Pillarsween who dies to one Sacred Fire. Again, another waste of my time. Surely I can't be the only one who thinks this. Let me know in the comments which gym leader you think is a waste of time. And I'm pretty sure with 8 generations there's going to be a fair few. Pain comes in at the most inappropriate time for another go and I hope it does not go as it did before. Golbat is first and I use a Sacred Fire which nearly finishes it off, but of course the knob uses Confuse Ray. Next turn I battle through and kill it with Strength. Alligator is next and I hit it with Strength which nearly does half and Water Gun is not doing enough, but Strength is still getting through Confusion and eventually I do kill it. Magnemite is just getting burnt in the face to die in one, Haunter dodges my fire and puts a fucking curse on me, but the next turn it can't outrun the fire. Finally it is Sneasel and I use Strength until it is nearly dead. It tries to kill me with a quick attack which fails and I wipe it up. Fuck off you little shit with your crappy haunter. One more Johto leader to go and it is a potential pain in the ass Claire. Her dragons are just going to be a pain if those Thunder Wave hits. God how I hate Thunder Wave. It needs to be overcome though to finish this challenge. Her first Dragonair is hit with a strength and it is nearly finished it off. It does miss the Thunder Wave which means strength can piss it off. The second one is hit with a critical hit and I miss another thunder wave. However, with the third one I don't get so lucky and I'm paralysed for the next hit and I need to recover to keep me safe. I finish it off with the next strength, but then Kingdra is the final obstacle and it hits me with Surf which is about a third. 
I start using fly, but there is a lot of luck here because I can't afford to get paralyzed. I hit it with fly, which is about half, but I'm able to survive another surf, and lucky for me, I get away with another fly to win my eighth badge. Looking back, I was extremely lucky. If I was hit by a thunder wave early or any paralysis, I probably would have been beaten by Kingdra, and I hate losing to Claire. I just see her as a piss poor lance with piss poor Pokemon. If you've not seen my Radical Red video, go watch it and go see the Claire section. Just fuck me, oh my god, it's very, very difficult. Before we go to the Pokemon League, I need to fight my friend Pain one more time, and I suspect it's going to be a load easier now. Why? Because I'm a monster, that's why. Pain starts with Sneasel, who goes down with one Sacred Fire. The cool, sexy butt for Alligator is next, and Fly does over half damage. Its Water Gun does nothing to me, and another Fly, and it's dead. I use Strength on the goal button, and it takes two to get rid of it. Magneton? He, yeah, no. Haunter is still as shit as ever, and Sacred Fire does the rest, and Kadabra is dead in one strength, uses shit defense. I would love to see Pain in future games, like maybe even the hero. Oh god, wouldn't that be cool? I reached Elite Four, and I knew I was always going to get here. Well, I always did, but I knew the problem was going to be, and it's right at the end. I'm still on minimum levels, which I am quite made up of, to be honest. The first idiot to get rid of is Will, which I suspect should be okay. Zatu is hit with strength and does over half. I get hit with a critical psychic, and it does nothing to me, which means I can get rid of it. The beautiful Slowbro is an arse, why? Because it has amnesia, and curse, and fucking body slam, which means it can paralyze me and then finish me off. I don't mind losing to Will as long as it's by Slowbro. Oh god, how I love Slowbro. I really need to do a video with that thing. I try again and get to Slowbro, but this time I use strength, and thankfully no body slam, which means I can send it to its doom. The second Zato hits me with Confuse Ray, but the strengths are able to clear it out. I fight the tree and hit myself, to which it uses Reflect, which is great. I cover myself to safety and then use a sacred fire to kill it. Finally, it's Jinx and one sacred fire is all it takes. The mighty Koga is next and this really should be very easy. The Ariados is easily swept aside with Fly. Muck could be a problem, but strength is nearly half, which isn't really amazing. I use sacred fire the next turn, which nearly kills it, but then I get poison, which is not good at all. With Koga not using a potion, I can kill it with a strength. The Crobat is next and this is a problem because it is faster than me and uses double team. I miss with Sacred Fire and here we go, more double team. The Sacred Fire hits over half and now I need to start healing because of the poison damage, but I can't just hit the thing and eventually after a lot of messing around, the little, well actually no Crobat is fucking massive, thing finishes me off. Now as I have saved prior to Elite Four, I got rid of Fly and replaced it with Shadow Ball. I was not sure if this was the right or wrong move, but I never really think of these things sometimes, I just do the first thing that pops in my head. I get to Koga again with the Ariados is fucked off with Sacred Fire. This time I do hit the muck with the Sacred Fire which does over half and it burns it. It uses Minimize but it matters not as I use Strength to remove it and get no poison. Crobat the Bastard is out but this time it uses Toxic and I'm struggling to finish it off in time. I do eventually wipe it out with Strength but then comes the next problem, Fortress. It protects which is shit and I then use Strength which does nothing. I try a Shadow Ball next turn but then it uses an Explosion to see me off. The third time I again get to Crobat and it's a fucking arse to get rid of. I do see it off without being poisoned by Toxic. I face the Fortree again and when it protects I recover. Fuck you you little shit. And I do manage to wipe it out with a Sacred Fire. The final Pokemon is Venomoth which is yeah a joke. But Koga actually proved to be difficult to remove which shocked me as I thought this would be an absolute breeze. I would like to believe now Bruno would be easy, well I hope to god he would be. I can't have both Koga and Bruno both being dickheads. Lance is meant to be the dickhead, not these two. Hitmontop comes out and I use Strength to push it aside. And on X well, I use Shadow Ball and it doesn't do half, which is not good at all. It uses Sandstorm and I can't finish it off with a second Shadow Ball, which means it can use Rock Slide. I survive to recover, but it can hit me again with another Rock Slide. I keep trying to survive, but then I'm killed by the sand. Oh, fucking hell, I've been beaten by an Onyx. This isn't the first challenge when I've been beaten by an Onyx, but it doesn't really look good on your resume when it happens. Getting to Bruno for a second time around and the Wangshif on it, the same things happened. Well, nearly. Do manage to finish off with the Shadow Ball, but the Sandstorm leaves me with 3 HP, which means I'm easy pickings for the Hitmonchan, who can Mach Punch me to death. I rethink things again and remove my HM Strength in place of Earthquake. I do get to Bruno once more, and this time the Onyx nearly dies in the new Earth move. It throws at the sand, but I use Shadow Ball to kill it. Hitmonchan comes out and Sacred Fire nearly finishes it off. It throws back Thunder Punch at me, which forces to me recover. It smacks him again with another thunder punch before falling to the sand. 
The Goro ripoff is next and I hit it with Sacred Fire which does over half and it uses Rock Slide and I hang on with 1 HP and the Sandstorm subsides, fucking hell. Bruno then uses a Max Potion which is great because then I can use 2 Sacred Fires to get rid of it. Finally it's Hitmon Lee. It doesn't have a priority move so I can recover to safe health and then Earthquake it in 1 and what a match that was and it makes me realise why I love Pokemon so much. It shows how much Rock Slide though is going to be a pain in the fucking arse in a few matches time. That bitch that is Karen is the final member of the Elite Four and I was not concerned because this was not going to be able to hurt me enough, well I think. Umbreon could be a wanker with those fucking sand attacks. Luckily 3 Earthquakes just kill it. Gengar falls to an Earthquake, Murkrow to a Sacred Fire, Houndoom to an Earthquake, Vileplume to a Sacred Fire and screw you Umbreon with your shitty little sand it didn't work at all. Finally it is Lance, the one I feared. Now if you'd watched the Lugia episode you would know why and I think I'm going to be screwed but I'm not one to give up but I'll do the best I can. First is Gyarados and I throw a Shadow Ball on it and it does about half. It uses Rain Dance so I throw another Shadow Ball on it and it doesn't kill which means I get hit by a Surf. I survive and I do get rid of it. The Dragonite is out and I recover and I get hit with a Thunder Wave which is the worst fucking thing that can happen. The next turn I get hit with 100% Thunder and I throw a Shadow Ball back. I get hit with Hyper Beam and I survive which means I can use Recover the next turn. Following the next Hyper Beam I do get rid of it. And now it's on to the second Dragonite and it's the same thing all over again. I have to survive the Hyper Beams and recover when it rests. Thankfully I get away with it and I'm able to kill the second one. But here it is, the main devil. It uses Rock Slide and misses. I do a Shadow Ball and it does over half. I get hit with Rock Slide and somehow survive which means I can kill it. Sadly though the Charizard can easily finish me off with a Wing Attack. This is the problem I face. If I get paralysed, Aerodactyl has to miss Rock Slide twice or I lose. Now what are the chances of this happening? Just do those odds. I can't get paralysed, which is a coin flip and then Rock Slide has to miss twice. It's never going to fucking happen. To get through both those Dragonites without the tosses using Thunder Wave is unlikely and I try so many times and it dawns on me. Why the fuck did I get rid of Safeguard? And without a hand I would have fucked over these wankers with no problem. But without that Safeguard I was simply fucked. There is nothing I can do. I have to finally admit defeat. I could try for years until I finally do it, but I finally have to do something I've never done. I restart the challenge. I have to redo the challenge by making sure I keep safeguard. If I don't have this move, I can't beat this challenge. It's simple as that. Now I really do care for everyone in this challenge, so I feel it's appropriate that I really start to do this. Hey everyone, it's Jake McCauley, the Weedle Guy. This dirty scouser is talking shit, he didn't start again, he just used cheat codes. He was crying to me about how hard Lance was. Felt sorry for the cunt. I wouldn't trust a single word he says. He stole all of my booze and left me in bed with a raging clue. Just remember when he starts up again, everything he's saying is a crock of shit. I think I just got you demonetized 16 times. And that is how much I consider you, the HA Council, part of me and my honesty is my integrity. Now with my new and improved shiny outcast, I get back to the Elite Four and I breeze through meeting Lance again. I am armed with my new powers and I know I can do this. Look, I can finish this, I can fuck him over. Come on you little fucker, wank shift, Dracula. The Gyarados battle goes exactly the same as before. Here comes the Dragonite and I use Safeguard and <laughs> I breeze through them both. I get to the Aerodactyl with full health and I'm happy, although I still need luck. It hits me with Rock Slide and oh fuck off you twat. Right, second time round, Rock Slide and Flitch. Oh, fuck off. It misses Rock Slide and Shadow Ball doesn't kill it, which means I'm screwed. Third time, it misses the Rock Slide, which is the key. I hit it with Shadow Ball and the second Rock Slide doesn't flinch, which means I can kill it. The Charizard comes out, but I'm fast enough to heal myself and I get hit with a Hyper Beam, which does fuck all. I recover again and start Shadow Balling. I'm able to keep safe before finishing it. Now it's the final Dragonite. I use Shadow Ball which does nearly 50% and Outrage does nothing. I use Sacred Fire to try and burn it which does not work but then it uses Outrage which crits. I had to recover and then it hits itself in confusion. Lance then uses a full restore so I try again with Sacred Fire and it works and it uses Safeguard. <laughs> Unlucky. I use Sacred Fire again that nearly kills it. Outrage does nothing and the burn finishes it off. Finally it's fucking done. This was the hardest battle I had to do without Safeguard. The stupid thing is, it's not done as there's still more to do. I think I'm going to smash Kanto, but I still need to get it done. Sabrina, well this should be really easy. Espeon, Shadow Ball, dead. Mr. Shit, Shadow Ball, dead. Alakazam survives a Shadow Ball, which surprised me really. However, even with a potion, the next Shadow Ball is a critical. 
Erica? Uh, <laughs> the monstrous Lieutenant Surge is next. Shit. <sighs> Sorry, needs to take a breath. I hit Raichu with a Shadow Ball and it gets a critical. Electro Buzz is able to survive a Shadow Ball, which means it uses a Light Screen, which is a pain in the ass. It then uses a Hyper Potion, which means I can finish it off. Electrode survives a Shadow Ball and it uses a double team. I can't finish it off, but it does it for me and kills itself. I fag Magneton and realize I have no Sacred Fires left. Fuck, I forgot to heal again. Let's, let's just do this again. Raichu dies in one. Electro Blood survives a Sacred Fire and gets burnt. It does use Light Screen and dies from its burn. The Electro comes out and this time I crit with a Sacred Fire. Magneton, fuck you. The second Electrode is last and two Shadow Balls do the damage. Misty won't be a problem because I knew I had fuck all against me. This was proven right as Golduck does nothing with the Surf whilst I kill it with a Shadow Ball. The Quagsire is able to use Rain Dance before falling. The beautiful Lapras does hit me with a Surf but it doesn't kill me even in the rain so I finish it. Starmie is last and it was always going to fall. My Fire Brethren Blaine is the next challenger. After another Shadow Ball I shit myself as it throws rocks but it does fuck all. Piss off you knob for scaring me like that. Magmar offers nothing, and the Fire Horse is last, and yeah, Fury Attack is a shit move, and I can finish it. My favourite Brock could be an arse, because it's in his name. Rock! I need to finish his Pokemon as quick as I can. Graveler is first, and it survives a Shadow Ball, and it uses Rollout, but it doesn't do enough damage, so I'm able to finish it off the next turn. I learn Sunny Day and remove Safeguard. I officially will not be needing this anymore, but thank fuck I had it prior. I start throwing around more Shadow Balls, and to stop Surf I use a Sunny Day. This then makes Surf shit so I can recover to safety and kill it. Onyx comes out and I can only put out the sun and bring up the sand before going down. Kabutop scares me Surf enough for me to recover, but I do manage to kill it. Finally it's Rhyhorn, and I recovered, worried about Rock Slide, but then it uses for an attack which misses anyway. I'm able to finish off with comfortable Shadow Balls. I go take on the Mighty Blue. For Pidgeot I use Sunny Day, but then he uses Mirror Move, which is quite lucky. I then use a Sacred Fire to wipe it out of one. His Raiden comes out which does scare me. I use Sacred Fire and it does about 75% and burns it thank god. But then it misses Rock Slide which is great and a Shadow Ball removes it. Gyarados, his possible last hope comes out. It survives Shadow Ball well, puts up the rain and hits me with a Hydro Bump which does over half. I finish it but a critical hit would have killed me. Alakazam is faster but doesn't kill me which means I can recover. I recover another time and am able to be safe enough to kill it with Shadow Balls. Arcanine tries Extreme Speed, which does a pitiful amount, and I can kill it with a critical Shadow Ball. Execu- oh fucking hell, I'm gonna have to use Shadow Balls. Egg Bomb barely scratches me, and I can get rid of it. I do love Blue, and I really want to see more of him. Like, that's why I like using the Blue mod for Red and Blue sometimes, because he's just such a great character. I then once again realise I forgot to fight Janine. I think it's because she's so wank, and having a trip to the toilet is more effort to be honest. So let's hit that tune again, and protect your ears. Sorry guys, I couldn't help it. I know people were laughing about this in the comments last time. Okay, it's time to fight Red. In the Lugia video, I had to resort to the toxic strategy and I wasn't really wanting to do this again. I know a win's a win, but I want to look cool and flashy and amazing, rather than doing something shitty like relying on toxic to do the damage. Well, let's just get this done, shall we? Come on, Red, you beautiful bastard. First is the Rat, which uses Charm on me whilst I use Sunny Day. It misses Thunder and I can use a Sacred Fire on it. Next is Blastoise and I try Sacred Fire and even in the sun it does fuck all and he uses Rain Dance which is not good. I try to use Shadow Ball which does fucking nothing and one Surf is able to finish me off. Second time I do burn the turtle with Sacred Fire and I start using Sunny Day to counter the Rain Dance. Surf does a huge chunk and I start recovering and use Shadow Balls to get through. It actually does go down with a burn, my worry is exactly what happens. The Espeon is faster and can wipe me out with a Psychic. Third time, I prep a lot better and manage to beat the Blastoise with far more health. I go against the Espeon again and although Shadow Ball does nearly half, it starts using Psychic which does so much damage and it's more than I can heal back. I realise I have to go on the offensive which means I will lose and I do. In the fourth time, it shows that Psychic does over 50% damage which means there is nothing I can do with recovering. After god knows how many attempts, I manage to hit it with a critical Shadow Ball and it's now time for the Snorlax. I heal and it uses Amnesia which is just... Fucking great! 
I use Sunny Day, and even with the sun up, Sacred Fire is like a little tickle to him. However, it's body slamming me, which is doing so much damage. I try to outlast the body slams by recovering, but eventually he paralyzes me, and a few turns later, I am killed by a critical. I sat back, and after a few beers, I realized that sadly, I have to go down the toxic route yet again, which is shit, and I feel bad saying that. However, unlike Lugia, getting back to Snorlax was still a real challenge as the Blastoise and Espeon are still handfuls. Hell, even the Pikachu could be a pain in the ass if it hits me with thunder. I eventually, eventually get back to the Snorlax again, and after using Toxic, it's just about playing safe until the poison does its job. After a while, I put the monster down with strength. With two left to go, it's Charizard, and it uses Wing Attack, so I have to recover. The next turn, I do manage to use Toxic, and then I need to keep recovering because I'm out of Sacred Fires, and I need to save the strength for Venusaur. Eventually, a beautiful lizard does succumb to the poison, and the final beast is Venusaur, and when I start recovering again, it goes for Solar Beam, which is great, as I gotta know it's good to fuck all. I can then relax and use my strength because Red just kept using Solar Beam. I was lucky enough to get a critical to fall to the Toad. This meant I finished the challenge at level 59. This was one hell of a challenge, and I am not looking forward to doing this in the remakes. I'll probably give them a go, simply because I'm going to run out of content at some point. I really hope you enjoyed this one, and the next one will be in around 4 weeks, and I'm either going to be using Mew or Palkia, whichever one gets done first. As I said at the beginning, make sure you give this a like and a comment to help with the algorithm, and subscribe for more content. And if you really think I deserve it, you can support me on Patreon as well. Thanks to Jake McCauley providing a bit of voice work there. I love both him and Bongzilla so much because they give me such a raging clue. His link will be in the description and everyone make sure you go to subscribe to him because he's a really good friend of mine. He's such a top lad. As always, to my HA Council and anyone new watching, stay safe, look after yourselves and you motherfuckers go get yourselves a beer. You deserve it. Until then, I have been HBT and this has been my beautiful outcast. Bye bye.